right. Welcome in. Welcome back, folks, to a Notre Dame enjoys its final break in the college football season before a four-game, very interesting playoff push edition of the Always Irish Show. Let's discuss it. There's a lot. There's a lot going on in the football world and a lot with Notre Dame. Let's feel our way through this on a Tuesday of a bye week. Let's get into it. As always, thanks for being here. You can find the program on YouTube. Do it. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Appreciate it very much. Give the video a thumbs up. That helps John out as well. Notifications on. That way you don't miss nothing. Twitter, search bar, always Irish, rat, always Irish. Hey. Emails, always Irish, India, gmail.com. Audio only anywhere you want it. You can get it. If you don't want to see my face, ain't nobody going to blame you for that. The call in lines, 312-988-15. Dial it up. Tell Uncle Yanni boy all you've heard and seen. Notre Dame Fighting Irish brought to you by SI. Read all about it every single day of your life. How about patreon.com slash always Irish. He the former captain. He the leading tackler. It's my goals, me and myself, breaking it all down. Thanks to everybody who's over there. Appreciate your support. Especially those of you that are there year-round to support us, even through the summer when there's not a lot of football. That means the world does. Keep that going year round. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. What an interesting football season. And what an interesting year for Notre Dame. It's just been so, it's been so hard to find the footing here. Find the realities of what this team is or could be week to week. Um, from the high of week one to the low of week two, and then all of the injuries and the offense struggling to get put together in the beginning and everything. And you just, you didn't know what the reality was. And so you, you started out having the the high end and then the low end. And then from there, you didn't know what you were going to get. And before you look at it, Notre Dame hasn't lost since, and they're playing good football and they're kicking the crap out of a lot of these teams. And I understand the schedule hasn't been murderer's row or whatever, but you are kicking the crap out of a lot of these teams. I may have misread this, but I thought I saw something on the bottom of the TV screen that said Notre Dame's margin of victory this year or like the last handful of games is the most of anybody in the country. And I know you're not playing great teams, but they're starting to kick the crap out of people. And sure enough, You just kept winning after Northern Illinois and everybody's doubting them and I'm doubting them and I don't know what I could get and I don't know what I could trust, but they just kept winning and kept winning and kept winning. Now you're on a six game win streak. Now Marcus Freeman has the best record he's ever had at this point in the year at Notre Dame. Marcus has now tied my main man, Frank Lee, for the most ranked wins in three years. So it's just... It's been a really interesting journey. And this Notre Dame team is flawed. It is injured. But they just keep winning. That's how I'm looking at it. They are flawed. They are injured. And they just keep winning. And I don't care what your schedule is or who's on it. That's a tough thing to do. Tough thing to do. And I know in the AP poll, whatever, that that people don't think that matters or whatever. You got to jump all the way up to eight. Like, it's good to move up, I guess, even though we don't value that. It's not the end all be all. It's good to move up. Again, maybe that one lady actually voted, had Notre Dame on her ballot this week. I don't know. Maybe it'd be nice if she included us. Um, So... That's my. That's where I'm at with this. A, I still believe it's a flawed team and it's a really injured team. They just keep winning. And so here's my positioning of this in my brain. I am trying very, very hard to separate out what I believe are the two big, big things we got left. Number one is, Using this off week, this final off week you have to get your mind right and get your body right as much as you can and prepare for these four unique tests left. Every one of them super unique to me and has their own feel. Florida State. They're so bad, it almost has me on alert. 
Like, that's a weird thing to say, but they are so bad, it almost has me on alert that Notre Dame will come out of this bye and the crowd's not that into it because you just think you're going to beat them because they're bad and they haven't scored more than 21 points all year and they're terrible, whatever. And that's when something stupid happens. And we already have a record of something stupid happening at home when it shouldn't this year. They're so bad that it's almost a red flag for me. So that's interesting. I hope it's cold and windy on November 9th. <clears throat> I want them checked out, not wanting to be there, and I want you to pound, pound them so hard. That's what I want, okay? Virginia is the tricky one. You want to know why Virginia is the tricky one? Ain't nobody talking about the Virginia one. That's why the Virginia one's a tricky one. Because you got all these interesting storylines around Florida State, Army, and USC. Virginia's in there in the middle. Army still going to be undefeated or whatever. I like the prospects of Notre Dame facing Army after seeing what they did against Navy. That should give Notre Dame and Notre Dame fans a lot of confidence facing Army. USC's, a, it's, listen, they are so inconsistent. USC has stretches of football where they play really, really effective, good football. And then they have other stretches where they just can't do anything and look totally incompetent. And it just comes and goes with them. So I don't care how many more games they lose or not or whatever. When we go out there, it ain't going to be easy. And we don't always play the best at going out there. And it's just kind of when the odd years when we go there, it's Thanksgiving weekend usually. And it's just like a sleepy holiday weekend or whatever. And you're going all the way out there. There's going to be four fans in the building, whatever. Like it's just hard to get up to go play in LA a lot of the times. And you're, you're, you're doing the New York, L.A. thing back-to-back, that travel, all that. So the way I'm looking at this is trying to separate out this four-game run and worry about that before I get out of myself and start going, where does 11-1 Notre Dame fall in the playoff? And what's the seeding going to be like? And where does a one-loss Notre Dame fall compared to like a two-loss SEC or Big Ten team, but the two losses are to other good teams or whatever, not Northern? Does that trump Notre Dame at 11-1 or whatever? What about the seeding? Does an 11-1 Notre Dame team get a 7 or an 8 and they're hosting? Or are you going on the road? To me, these are – I am trying to just – not think about that playoff part of it at all and just focus on getting 4 and 0 getting 4 and 0 um because there's just so many unknowns with the playoff thing i i don't know how much you get out of like pounding your brain over it we have no idea there's no data yet there's no data yet to have any idea how this committee is going to value anything or how they're going to look at resumes or whatever. I already told you this committee's off to a bad start with me because they made Michigan's AD the head of the committee. It's almost unbelievable to me. They named Michigan's AD the head of this committee while he was being investigated for covering up multiple scandals. That's when they went to Ward Manuel and said, you know what? We think you should be in charge of all this. They went to him while Michigan, who's being investigated for multiple scandals, made him in charge of this committee. None of these people have any morals. None of them have any credibility to me at all. I don't trust anybody involved. The guy at the top, I don't trust at all. Rather than saying, if we did something wrong, we're going to honor it and make it right. He covered it all up and did it all. So I don't respect this guy. And uh, they put him in charge of the committee. I don't trust them to do Notre Dame any favors. So we have no idea how any of that's going to shake out or whatever. So I'm trying to put that aside and just do the Notre Dame four games. These are four unique battles, four unique tests. I need Notre Dame to take this last uh, off week 
Get rejuvenized. Get your mind right. Get your body right. Try and get anybody back healthy you can. Billy Boy, good to see him back in the lineup. And, and get ready for this stretch. Can't get enough unfiltered Notre Dame football talk? Be sure to go over to patreon.com slash always Irish. Former captain Mike Goolsby and myself. Do that. Screw it. Oh, we never won anything. It's been 30 years. I genuinely don't know how much value there is in worrying about this playoff thing because we, there's just no data. Nobody has any idea who else is going to win or lose, how they're going to value all that. I have no idea. You just got to get four more wins and make them deal with the Notre Dame problem. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, you know, as far as what you have coming up to look forward to telling you, man, Ohio state, Penn state is, that is going to be really, really interesting. While Notre Dame's off eating Charlie Weiss's burgers, you could sit there and watch that game. And it's going to be really, really interesting. My Penn state theory is going to be tested again. I always say Franklin Penn state is Notre Dame. Brian Kelly recruit pretty good, but not elite. Win most of, almost all of the games they're expected to win and then fail in the biggest moment against the best teams with the chance to really move the needle. Fail every time. That has been James Franklin, Penn State lately. Can they change that narrative and clip Ohio State? Or is my theory right again and then it's same old Penn State and when they play somebody with talent, they, they can't hang? I am really interested to see how that's going to go. So that is the, the number one thing I'm looking at. Both those teams are ranked ahead in Notre Dame. Somebody's going to drop. What does that do? I don't know. But it's a good place to be as a Notre Dame fan on the break. I'm sorry, but I'm not that impressed with Penn State's wins. Who's their best win? Illinois? Multi-loss USC. Who's their best win? Like, like, I'm not buying, I can't believe, I am hesitant to buy into Penn State. The biggest win looks like it's Illinois to me or, or a win over a multi-loss USC team. They have not really played anybody that's like high, high level talent to me. So let's see if they could beat somebody good for once. How about this game? Duke, Miami. Miami's been begging for a loss the last month, multiple times, gotten away with it. How about Duke Miami? Can I get a Duke rise up here game maybe? How far would that go for Notre Dame if they ended up with a loss? You know what else is very high on my bye week priority list? Watching Oregon embarrass Michigan. That's high on my list too. So I don't know. Really good weekend for Notre Dame. Brian Kelly embarrasses himself on the big stage. You can't beat that. And now, oh, this is going to be interesting too. So now you got Brian Kelly suffering that brutal loss. You got a couple losses now. Now they're in the bye, and then they play Alabama coming out of the bye. Like, you could debate, like, what, what would help Notre Dame? Is it Alabama getting another loss to knock them totally out of playoff consider Whatever. I could live with whoever loses that game. I could live with it. Either Alabama being knocked out of playoff talk for good or Brian Kelly catching a third law. I'm here for either outcome. I'm here for that. I am here for that. Let's finish with this. Good job by Mike Elko. Just like it's a good job by Freeman, you know, not losing after the early loss or whatever. Really good job by Elko. Turning it on. They're playing better football. They haven't lost. Ballsy move by Elko to bench his quarterback, bring the mobile kid in. It paid off for him in spades. End up winning the game. LSU had no way to stop their kid's legs. Spread him out, run it. I think he only threw one or two passes. They couldn't handle it. So this is really, really an interesting spot for Notre Dame to be in. I am really trying to not worry about that playoff thing at all. Because you got to get to 4-0 for that to even be a thing. If Notre Dame loses again, they're out. It ain't app. They're, they're out. 
Maybe some years with two losses, depending on who they are and what else happens, you're still in it. It ain't this year. So I am trying not to worry about something where there's no way to even even try and guess what this committee's going to do and how they're going to value all this stuff. You got to get four more wins for it to even matter. So that's what I'm trying to focus on. Um, but man, am I looking forward to a week with no Notre Dame anxiety. Let these other teams beat each other up, get another couple losses. Maybe we move up some more. Really good spot to be in. Listen, I'm going to finish this the way I started it. Notre Dame is a flawed team. They are an injured team, but man, they just keep winning. They just keep winning. So credit to the guys for not giving up and flinching. Credit to the coaching staff. And you're in playoff position. And if I told you in August, I could guarantee, record aside, record aside, you don't know whether we're undefeated, one loss, two, record aside. In August, if I came to you as a Notre Dame fan and said, what if I could guarantee you Notre Dame would be in their second uh, off week of the year, firmly in the middle of playoff discussion where if you keep winning, you're going to be in, would you take it? You would have all taken it. You would have all taken it if I guaranteed you that, but you didn't know the record or anything. You didn't know about Northern Illinois. You had no idea. But I just said, Notre Dame's in a position in that last break where if they run the table the final month they're in, you would have all taken it. That's right where you're at. It hasn't always felt like it, but that's where we're at. So enjoy an off week with no Notre Dame stress. Get your rooting interests where they need to be for us to move up. Enjoy it. Have a good one. Don't forget to check out the merchandise. The link is in the description. You can browse and carouse all the different Always Irish gear. Make sure you head over there and get something for the next tailgate. Thanks for being here.